My name is uh, Dr. Muzi Gininza, and hope we are going to go through this uh, workshop together and I look forward to your participation. Uh, yes, so the title of this uh, workshop is Methodologies in Natural Sciences. Um, this concerns students in the natural sciences. By that we mean we are referring to those in agriculture, life science, life and consumer sciences, excuse me, um, environmental sciences as well from our uh, various colleges. Uh, that's essentially when I was setting or preparing this material, I had in mind those kind of students. So you will alert me and let me know of you, if, if you are from a different college and you are part of us, I would appreciate that engagement. Now, research problems in the National Sciences area, uh, they encompass a lot of things, uh, which include understanding and describing characteristics of, of a particular phenomenon, uh, the ability to manipulate or control the effects of a particular phenomenon just as well. Uh, this presentation is concerned with uh, the why or rather the how part of your research. It's loosely translated, it's a loosely translated uh, a meaning or reference to the methodology. So you might have uh, different understandings of what methodologies is, but then um, uh, we are just going to have a, 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 a basis or a similar understanding with we'll strive to so that we can have a similar understanding of what me the word methodology is. And as we move on, hopefully we'll emerge at the end together, having a better understanding of how to approach your research uh, methodology. We are going to look at the research. We are going to just look at the research, the meaning objectives and characteristics of the research. Then we are going to also look at the types of research that are there, the research structure or components, research methodologies um, that are used in, natural, in the natural science. We're just going to have a discussion also around that part. Then we procedures for methodologies in the natural sciences. So hopefully that will be enough to just stir up a good interaction or discussion after this so that we can help and, and we can try and help each other on in this area. So the meaning of research. Research is a logical and systematic search for new and useful information on a particular topic. That is what we, we first have to understand. It's a, it's, it's a logical and uh, systemic, systematic search for useful and for rather for new and useful information. It encompasses uh, it encompasses it, it encompasses defining uh, and redefining problems, formulating hypotheses and suggestions or, su or suggested solutions, collecting, organizing, and evaluating data making uh, deductions and, reach, and reaching conclusions. And at, la at, last, at last carefully testing the conclusions, to the, co the conclusions we found to determine whether they fit the formulated hypothesis. And that is a definition by uh, Woods in 1927. That's how they described uh, what the, the, the research, what a research is. Now let's look at the objectives of any research. The major objective of any type of research is to find out the reality and facts which is known or which is rather unknown as well and has not been exposed. Everything, some, some things that might not be known at the moment will be uncovered by the research. Its objectives may include to test and verify facts, analyze events, processes or phenomena, or phenomena to identify their cause and effect and relationship. So there, those are, that is some of the objectives why we do research. Uh, to develop tools, concepts and theories, theories and solve and understand scientific and non-scientific problems. Uh, the prediction of variables, that is also something, some of the objectives why we do research. The characteristics of a research, um, 
uh, research has a purpose. Uh, it's purposive. The res uh, research should have a definite aim or purpose. So when we engage in research, it's not just so that we can finish our academics. There is a particular research, the uh, a purpose why we need to engage so that we can accomplish um, and, and, and realize our objectives. The research is rigorous. It indicates careful, carefulness and a degree of exactitude in, in research. This is achieved through a good theoretical base and sound uh, methodolog methodological uh, design. Uh, another characteristic of a research is its replicability. The results of the the results of the tests of hypotheses should be supported again and again when when the same type of research is being conducted uh, on in another by someone else or in another similar circumstances. Precision uh, research needs to be very precise. Theoretical concepts must be defined with, with great precisions, the precision that others can, can use those definitions to measure those concepts and uh, test the, theo the, the theories that were, that were produced or rather that were, that were used in the study. And falsifiability, a theory must be in a way that it cannot, or rather it can be dis disproven. Excuse me for that. Uh, parsimony, there's another, the last characteristics we're looking at. Uh, scientists must always strive to accept the simplest, logical, or most economical explanation. Okay, so because there, there might just be a lot of uh, explanation of, uh, that are out there for particular uh, research. So we have that also as our uh, feature or characteristics. We move on to the types of research. The research, uh, research may be classified according to their, uh, their purpose or function. There are three types, the first being uh, exploratory research. The exploratory research refers to, or rather it's often, it's often conducted in new areas of inquiry where the goals of the research includes uh, to scope out the magnitude or extent of a particular phenomenon, problem or behavior. It, it general, to generate some initial ideas about the about a phenomenon, uh, to test the feasibility of undertaking a, a more ex extensive study regarding a particular phenomenon. So these are some of the reasons or these are some of the reasons why exploratory research is conducted. Descriptive research is another type wherein a research method uh, is a research method that describes the characteristics of the population phenomenon that is being studied. It describes, explains, uh, and validates research findings. It can answer how, what, when, how, how, the, all those how questions, um, but not why. That is from the descriptive research. The researcher does not control, manipulate any variables, but only observes and measures them. Descriptive research is usually defined as a type of quantitative research. Qualitative research can also be used for descriptive uh, purposes. And lastly, we have explanatory research. These are the, these. Are, uh, what I'm covering is just the three types of research. The last is is being the explanatory research. It is conducted for a problem that that was not well researched before. Uh, it demands prior, it demands priority. It generates operational definitions, and it, it's to provide a better research model. I think that is what some of uh, our PhD students are working at at doing. It is intended to explain rather than to describe the phenomenon that is being studied. The main aim of the explanatory research 
is to identify any casual links between the factors or variables that pertain to the research problem. Such research is also very structured in nature. Now we're going to look at the components of the research. Um, if you are going to be engaging in any particular kind of research study, these are some of the typical features that you are going to find in a, uh, a in, in a research. That is, it has a topic, it has a, it has a definition or identification of a particular problem. There's literature uh, survey and reference uh, collection. It, there's an assessment of the current status of the chosen topic. So this is to say that uh, the, the, any research, it will have an introduction that, has, uh, that contains all this relevant information. Uh, it talks to, apart from just the objectives of the research, we have, we have uh, the literature as well, wherein the, the students or the researcher engages in extensive research they, they, they investigate the problem and they find out what else has been done by other authors and what sort of uh, methods or mechanisms they've used to come to those particular conclusions. And then we move on to formulating of hypotheses after having your, your research pro objectives. You have uh, the, uh, you formulate the research hypothesis then there's determination of the research design. There's determination of the research methods. There's uh, data collection or conducting of the research. There's data analysis and tests of the hypothesis, depending on the type of research, if you're having an hypothesis or not. Furthermore, uh, researchers will interpret their results and have the results section, discuss the results once again, and also the uh, report the results. Now, research approaches or methodologies, I decided to call it approaches deliberately because uh, we, we there's a lot of students in the in the room. So if I didn't want to really fix, keep it or narrow it to a particular uh, uh, topic, but then the research approaches or methodologies they include the following. This encompasses the study of the methods or the instruments necessary for the elaboration of scientific work. So this really it encompasses everything, the methods, the instruments, uh, even someone said that the, the justifications why you are using a, a particular procedure in your analysis. So all this information really needs to be understood and you need to have it in your quaver. I mean, I fully understand why you are doing what you are doing. To some extent, write, note it or not write it down in the various segments of your materials and methods or methodology sections. Now, the first one is the quality, qualitative research. Qualitative research uh, entails um reporting such that uh, you are reporting in the narrative or there's there's discovering of grounded theory uh, exploring a, stu a case study there's also describing of a phenomenon uh, phenomenology seeking to understand ethnography that is in quotes um and this qu the questions of the question often starts with how and one asks uh, broad questions when you are involved in qualitative research. It aims to produce in-depth and, and illustrative information in order to understand the various dimensions of the problem that is under study. It, it is concerned with uh, aspects of reality that cannot be quantified, focusing on the understanding and explanation of the dynamics for social reasons. Um, it, it, it works well with the universe of meanings, motives, aspirations, beliefs, values, attitudes, which corresponds to a, to a deeper space of relationships, uh, processes and phenomena that cannot, uh, that cannot reduce 
it cannot be reduced to operationalizable uh, variables. So this is to say that uh, quantitative research, it involves a lot of, um, it moves away from using numbers. It's more on using or describing phenomena uh, using words and such things really cannot be quantifiable. Hence, it's a different, um, if it were music, I would call it a different genre. Uh, again, I don't want to um, classify it as such, but then I, I hope you get what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Then we have another approach to, uh, approach with uh, metho methodologies, which is uh, quantitative research. Uh, it tests objective theories by examining an independent variable to see its impact on dependent variables. So here there's experiments, there are experiments or there are experimental groups that are being used to compare. Um, it uses words like effect, impact, uh, relate, compare, best, etc. All those words are used in these kinds of approaches and it, it, that there's a there's a testing of hypotheses. It asks specific questions. There's no ambiguity um, about the concepts being measured. There's sampling. The sampling is usually random. So the studies of the study of the po uh, potentialities and weakness of various research methodologies has been of interest to several researchers such that it has given rise to a third method or is a third approach, which is uh, the mixed method. Now, this one, it's a combination of at least one uh, quantitative or and, and one quantitative research component. So there's either one of these components to it. So when you are working, it, it could be it could be a situation where in one is working with quantitative research, but then you find yourself having to include qualitative research in your study. So that's when it gives that, that gives rise to this kind of method where you call where it is called uh, a mixed method. Now, quantitative research in natural sciences, that's the, the facet or that's the part we are looking at or that is of interest with uh, for the day. In natural sciences, we are particularly interested in quantitative research. Remember, in uh, when I was introducing this, this uh, uh, subject, I mentioned that um, in, in natural sciences, we, there here there will be students that will be in animal production, there will be students that will be in um, life and consumer sciences, environmental sciences, different aspects uh, wherein there's a lot of um, analysis in terms of quantifying things. So it falls, or it goes to without say that uh, quantitative research really is a part of uh, what is what, what is done in the natural sciences. So you'll find that in some spaces when you register, when you enroll for uh, for the very basic for for your your doc, your, your 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 BSc, your your starting up for your BSc degree, you find yourself by default you'll be you'll you'll have to utilize certain quantitative uh, methods or measurements by default, you're finding yourself in that particular field of, 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 of research. So it's not doesn't necessarily mean that you have to choose the one that you, you'll be working with, but then it's just when you enroll, when you when you decide to embark on a in a kind of field that that you you find yourself uh, already for uh, already utilizing some of the research methods or the approaches of the research methods. So it's important that, um, that that you have a clear understanding where and how these things are, are, are so that they can, you can be able to relate and make sense of, of what you are having. 
So quantitative research in natural sciences, it, it adopts structured um, procedures and formal instruments for data collection. Results may be inferred to a larger population size because the samples are generally large and considered representative of the population. It uses clearly defined objectives. All the, the, the aspects of research are uh, carefully designed before implementation. Furthermore, it has great replicability. So if you are able to uh, clearly indicate your objective, if you are able to, to indicate exactly how you, you went about collecting your data and uh, getting your getting your the results that you that you will probably have someone else should be able to replicate exactly what you did and get the same findings that you that you got in your study so that is what is meant there by uh, by replicability so some of the one of the disadvantages or some of the disadvantages that have been indicated with quantitative research or rather quantitative research in natural sciences is that uh, data may not be used to explain why a particular or rather why a, po a population thinks or feel or acts in a particular way. Remember we talked about that why part that, that is associated with um, quantitative uh, research. It's time consuming. Uh, it requires sampling, data collection and analysis. So there's a lot of time that might pass there or that might go there whilst you are busy engaging in those things. So that is some of the, those are some of the disadvantages that have been uh, identified. Now the quantitative research has different types. There are different uh, types to it. We have a descriptive, correlation, quasi, or quasi experimental designs. There's uh, also experimental designs as well, or some would say true experimental designs. So the descriptive uh, descriptive um, research here, once again, a research method, it's a research method that describes the characteristics of the population or phenomenon that is being studied. Correlation, this one is uh, involves relationships finding or seeking to find relationship between one or two or rather between two or more variables which might explain a particular occurrence or phenomenon. It relates one or more independent variables uh, variable to one or more dependent variables because we do some experiments are having more than one um, depend or more than one independent variable. So some research is is some research are, is quite big in that sense. So then once again, we have quasi experimental uh, designs where in the causal causal comparative risk, there's com causal comparative research. It is um, it is not true. That's what the word uh, quasi mean there, that it's something that is not a true experiment. So it's not true in the sense that it lacks uh, either randomization or control. So when you are normally or ordinarily when you are doing an experiment, you one would expect that you randomize um, something or you randomize your, your treatments, whatever you're going to apply to your experimental units that such that you, um, you are able to make uh, you don't have biasness in your in your results. So with true experiments, um, this is when there's it's intervention based. There is uh, mostly it's mostly hypothesis based just as well. The features of a true experiment is that there's randomization. We'll talk a little bit about randomization a bit later. There is control or placebo. There's also manipulation whereby the researcher is involved there. He increases or decreases, is involved in uh, the experiment such that um, there's a clear manipulation of um, 
of of of, of um, the the treatments which are being up whatever is being applied to the experimental units. Now procedures in research. After addressing the research proposal by having a topic and literature review, uh, as some of you have done or are still embarked on that process. Uh, so after also preparing the problem statement, research questions and objectives, one has to choose the research approach, um, the research design, uh, research methods, data collection, uh, data collection process and data analysis. So these are the processes. These are basically the things that um, as students you will be doing in collaboration with your supervisors. We do not expect that you conduct all this all alone and come and just surprise your supervisors with results. It's really not advisable. So students really should do everything, especially in this part of your research in sync with your supervisors. If you honestly do these things alone and, and, and expect to surprise the supervisor, you are the one that is going to be surprised because these things they require that you do them in proper consultation with your supervisor. I've already mentioned that the research approaches, the research approach, which is the either quantitative or qualitative, that one is pretty is predetermined by virtue of the discipline in which you are in. Then we have to choose the research design, research method, uh, data collection and data analysis. So these are some these are the things that we are going to look at together um, in this time, especially in the subject of quantitative um, quantitative research. So research designs. This uh, basically what this is. It is a, a framework, method, or structure of a study chosen for data collection and analysis. It justifies the logic, structure, and principles of the methodology and methods and explains how these relate to the research question or questions. The function of a research design is to ensure that the evidence obtained enables the researcher to answer the initial questions, initial question unambiguously, as unambiguously as possible. That is a definition also of the uh, divorce uh, 2001. Now, there are types of research designs in quantitative uh, research. Quant uh, it uses deductive reasoning by forming a hypothesis. Uh, two, by collecting data in an investigation of the problem. And th thirdly, um, by analyzing the data to, pro to prove the hypothesis not false or false. A further look at research methods. A research method is a technique for collecting data which might include uh, questionnaires, structured interview uh, schedules, participation, participant observation, uh, survey focus group observation, uh, interpretation of documents, experiments, secondary data, internet uh, research methods. Um, that once again is a definition by Bryman at all 2014. Uh, research methods are various procedures, schemes and systems that are used in research and they are planned, scientific and also objective. Um, data collection process. When you look at the data collection process or processes, the data collection processes have three approaches. Observational method, interview and experimental. Observational methods can be done by direct observation or by use of existing records. So that is one way. Interviews can be done by use of personal interviews, poster surveys, and telephone surveys. Experiment, experimentation examines the cause and effect of relationships through the use of control and experimental groups. So 
uh, once again, this one the experimentation is the one that uh, that involves the intervention of the researcher. What the, re the researcher has to has to do in order to acquire the results. Sampling methods. Sampling methods um, can be probable. There are probability and non-probability sampling methods. The probability one that's highlighted in blue is the one that is mostly used in, um, in, in quantitative research with respect to natural sciences. It's, I said it's mostly used because we sometimes, in some instances, non-probability sampling methods are also used in, um, in, 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 natural, in the natural sciences. The first, uh, method of probability sampling is random sampling. Random sampling in uh, basically uh, here a random there is a random selection of elements for a sample for a sample. The sample there is a sample the sampling technique is implemented where the target population is considerably large. All possible samples uh, all possible samples of a given size have um, the same probability of being selected. So in this particular method, uh, basically what happens is that there is the selection of uh, particular um, uh, of particular individuals so that you can use them for your, your, your respective research. So in this particular method just as well, is an example would be if you're going to have um, if you're having a group of 10 uh, objects or some individuals that would be your population you want to select one for your study if ever there would be such a case but then if you just follow if you have one if you want to select one out of 10 students what you do is you label them you label them you have their names written down then what you do is you select one at random by meaning meaning that you put their names the, you, you, after labeling them you put their names in a bag you just draw one uh, at random so one would have just an, a same chance of being selected out of the 10 so that would be essentially mean uh, one out of 10 it would be the probability that you select all of the individuals in the bag. So I'm explaining this one because it's basically uh, a system that has an implication on all the other methods that 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 that, uh, that are there in the random selection. So what we also have to understand is that the sample that gets to be drawn is a representative of the total or rather of the rest of the population. So you have to make sure that when you are drawing your sample, the sample that you are having for experimentation, it resembles exactly the population that is in question because from the sample you are going to make inferences about it to or about the, the rest of the population. So it has to really represent what you have what you what you have as a total population so then there's a second method the second uh, sampling method that is available which is a stratified random sampling method i put it like that now in this method a large population is divided into groups the groups you can call them strata and members of the samples are chosen randomly from the respective strata or the respective group. Now, there is no requirement to select all the strata within a population. That is to say that uh, some of the groups you don't, some of the groups might not be of interest when you are conducting your study in brackets or rather what I have an example there is uh, in a farm you might be have, you might, one might be interested in the lactating cows. So one would uh, be, be categorizing the animals that are there or rather the cows that a farmer is having. So the lactating and then lactating, but then the one that is of interest, the ones that might be or may be of interest would be the lactating ones. So you 
do your selection amongst that group. The third one is cluster uh, sampling method, wherein the, the population is divided into clusters, usually, um, usually using a geographic and demographic segmentation uh, parameters. Uh, a cluster is a cluster is similar to the strata or rather the stratum that we were referring to in 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 the second example there. However, the sampling process is slightly different. The procedure of a number of of the, the pro, now a set number of clusters is selected using a single a simple randomization or randomized sampling from the rest of the population or a population that has got n number of clusters. So essentially what that means is that if the population once again may be divided into clusters. It might be, let me just put it simply, your population can be divided into groups. These groups, however, needs to ensure that one would have to ensure that all these groups, they, they, they they pretty much look like each other. One uh, a word for that would be heterogeneous, but then they, they are heterogeneous. The groups themselves in a cluster, they are different. The, the, the individuals in, in a particular cluster are different. However, the clusters themselves, if you are having 10 clusters, for instance, the 10 clusters must look, uh, must be similar in order to proceed with this kind of uh, sampling method. So to illustrate this further, there is, uh, I have an, an example there that I used, wherein um, there's the meaning of the word uh, stratified sampling. S uh, stratified sampling is one, uh, is one in which the population is divided into homogeneous segments, and then the sample is randomly taken from the segments. Whilst cluster sampling refers to sampling method wherein members of the populations, population are selected at random from a natural occurring group called a cluster. So this one, in this one, the members of the group needs to be put or rather organized in clusters. Then you um, let's look at the, the sampling there. Random uh, under sample, Random select, randomly selected individuals are taken from all the strata that that might be there in the population. However, with uh, clustering or well, with the cluster sampling, all the individuals are selected randomly. Uh, are selected randomly uh, are from sele are randomly selected clusters. So what happens here? The the researcher selects the clusters, and then um selection of the population of population elements um here it's individually under sam under certified sampling whilst cluster sampling it's collective meaning that you, the what the whole cluster is used for observation or for 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 data collection uh, in this part of um in this kind of sampling method there is this homogeneity within the group, whilst with clustering, there is um, the homogeneity is between the groups. That is essentially what I was trying to explain previously, uh, the distinction between uh, stratified and cluster sampling. The homogeneity is within groups when you're when you're having cluster stratified sampling, whilst with cluster sampling, the homogeneity is between groups. Heterogeneity is between the groups whilst or, that is with stratified sampling whilst with uh, cluster sampling there's heterogeneity within within groups within within the group that that is under selection then there's a fourth uh, method of selection in this method of selection, the sampling units are selected at uh, regular intervals 
the starting point of sampling is selected at, uh, at random using simply simple random sampling. This interval is calculated by dividing the population size by, uh, by the target uh, target sample size. An illustration is when you are having, or rather an illustration to determine the sample interval is when you're having 100 cows and you want to select 20. So this is to say that you divide the 100 cows by the 20 and giving you five. So five would be your selection, so you're your selecting uh, or rather your, your sample interval. So I have a picture there that indicates what tends to happen. It is such that you allow the, the animals to come out of the crawl or that crush pan. When they come out of this uh, structure, you will be counting them one, two, three, four, five, and then you use the fifth one for your, uh, your analysis. However, now the issue is with finding the starting point. So we get that you, you need to have an interval and you need to have a sample size that, OK, you want to have your, 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 your sample size is 20 and then your interval is every fifth animal. So which then is going to is, are you going to use as your starting point? Now for that to select a starting point, the starting point is selected at randomly between um, one and five, which is the interval itself. So you use the very interval to determine where are you, which which one are you going to use as your starting point. So once you've selected that your starting point between one and between one and five, uh, maybe you can select two as your starting point. Then starting with the second one, you'd allow the animals to come out one, two. When the second animal comes out, that's when you start counting your interval. So you'd count one to uh, from the second one, you'd count three, four, five, six, seven. That is the fifth. Then you, you use you sample that one all the way up until you get to um, the sample size that is desirable or whether that is under uh, question. Other non probability sampling methods. Remember, I indicated that um, in quantitative analysis, we tend we do tend to use uh, non probability sampling methods. The non probability sampling methods in, uh, are mostly associated with with qualitative analysis or sorry with qualitative research methods. However, we do use them in uh, in, in in life sciences just as well, or rather in natural sciences. Some of, the, some of the methods or the typical methods that are there are convenience sampling. I've put up a picture there showing convenience sampling. There's a researcher at the, at the, at the center there sampling the, the people that are nearest to him. There's purposive sampling wherein the researcher also is, is found in the middle there since, uh, getting information from the people that uh, he's determined for a particular reason that they might be useful to him to get the data that is required for the research. Then there's also the snowballing or the snowball sampling method that is also available for for for, for research for for, na for natural sciences for research in natural sciences. So this uh, this snowballing technique that is 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 used normally is used in uh, in agriculture. Um, they normally use it amongst farmers to find out. Normally, the researcher would have a cohort or would have a pool of of farmers that are closest to him that they that he knows about, and the ones that the farmers that he that are closest to him that he knows about they they direct him or they refer him or her to even other people that might be useful to for information or for data collection same same those people that are there that that would be would have been referred would also refer that uh, the researcher to even others such that you can have a larger sample size until you get to the one that is determined the area of uh, determining the sample size is uh, is one that is used. Uh, uh, I think statistical me measures or uh, methods are there to determine sample sizes. So I think it's beyond 
it's it's something that's it's available that you can do. There are tables that are used for determining sample sizes. There are equations just as well for determining sample sizes. So it, it, the part that is that is of interest at this point is that you, you get to understand that there are when you are sampling, there are these methods that are available to for utilization, whatever for sampling um, utilization as sampling methods for your research. Now, for your data collection or rather for the data analysis, um, this section involves um, statistical analysis. So one has to really be acquainted with particular statistical procedures. Um, it is a process wherein, or it's a process of cleaning and transforming and modeling the data to discover useful information for discussion, supporting decision making, and also conclusions. Um, it's a process of systematically applying statistical and or logical techniques to illustrate, to illustrate, describe, condense, and evaluate data. Data analysis is a process that relies on methods and techniques um, used to collect raw data. So it is um, it assists the researcher in mining in mining for insights that are relevant to the question or objectives of the aim or, or aim. Or, or aims of the that particular research. So essentially, this part of the research requires that the students or the researcher be fully acquainted with statistical analysis uh, systems or, or programs uh, so that you can be able to pro properly process the data that you get from your, your analysis. When you're processing the data, you ensure that you do not produce or provide um, the raw data as it is to the reader or to the reviewer or to whomsoever that is going to be using the looking or reading through your research work. You do not by any means provide raw data so that uh, it, it is used for, you don't use that for your discussion. So in, in, I'd, I'd conclude because this is, is the last slide. I'd conclude by saying that uh, the methodologies in in the natural sciences most often will involve quantitative the quantitative approach. So students need to be able to clear uh, to clearly show the reviewers or, or, or readers of their work why the particular research. Um, was conducted in the manner that they have done. Give just if proper justification because that is essentially the method, the, the method, the met materials and methods section or the methodology section of your research. So having gone through introduction, having gone through the literary review, it puts the reader or the reviewer in a in a pos in a position wherein uh, he or she understands exactly why the research was done or rather why the research needs to be done. It, um, why why it was done and the aims of the research and then when you when the reader gets to this section where you are talking about your methodology, you must you must have full justification and full understanding. It shouldn't it shouldn't uh, leave the readers of your work are confused as to why certain techniques were applied and why the uh, certain techniques were left out in the, the the research or rather in the data collection. So having said that, ladies and gentlemen, um, I just want to appreciate the chance, the time and opportunity. And yeah, hopefully we'll um, get a chance to to chat about this and, and talk about this and just have a discussion as to um, the materials and met or the methodology section of your research. Thank you, Mr. Tony.